Let's all stand in the reading of the Word of God. Psalm 65, and we're going to start with verse 1, uh, just for one verse. Psalm 65 and verse 4. Psalm 65 and verse 4. Psalm 65 and verse 4. Say amen when you find out. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even thy holy temple. One more time. Blessed right here. Pinpoint it right here. Help us, Lord, not allow the enemy to steal the blessing that you, that you have in store for me this morning. Lord, without you, I cannot do nothing. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. One more time. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and cause us to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts, which shall be satisfied with the goodness of the house, even of the holy temple. We live in times that glory to God, everything's here and everything's there, everything's stressful, everything this, and amen, this is due, that is due, and amen, the world stage, and amen, everything is in utter chaos. Amen. They don't say Canada done switched over to electronic. Amen. Money. There's no cash. Everything's just electronical. Amen. Glory to God. And, and America is heading that direction. Amen. Everything in Canada is already set up. 
Amen. You say, what do you mean, Brother Poole? We better hold on. The best is yet to come. Did you hear me? In Psalm 65 and verse 4, God calls such a servant apart in his spirit. Amen. His spirit woos him into intimate communion. He emerges from his communion with God-given word. And he begins to walk with the spiritual authority. And if I put a title of the message, it's for every one of us here from the pulpit to the front door, back door, side door. God is calling us to come up. Did you hear me? God is calling us to come up. Amen. Everybody say, I'm satisfied. Why are you satisfied? I'm never satisfied. I want to get up a little more high in the Lord. Did you hear me? Amen. I believe it's in Exodus chapter 18 and verse 19 through 22. Hearken now to my voice and I will give thee counsel. And, shall, and, and God shall be with thee and be thou for the people to, to God were that they mayest bring the cause unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinance of the laws, thou shalt show them the ways wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, Ooh, listen, men that fear God, men of truth, hold covenants, places such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, Rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. It shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee. But every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself. And they shall bear the burdens with thee. Here's Moses. The children of Israel delivered. The children of Israel is delivered. Here he's got millions of people, not thousands, but millions. I think one comment says that two to three million people came out of bondage that day. Jephro was saying, his father-in-law Jephro was saying, in other words, you, you the pastor, Moses, you need to shut yourself in with God. Amen. Sign others the job of counseling. Then get alone with God. Seek his presence, get his mind, receive his word. This shall be your first priority. I believe it's, amen, Exodus 20, amen, 20 and verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, go down, charge the people. They say, break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them that would perish. Moses represented the blessed man spoken by, da by David. In Psalm 64 and verse 4. He is. Blessed is the man. Whom thou chooses and causes to approach unto thee. That he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with goodness of thy house. Even of the holy temple. God is calling us to come up. Don't be satisfied where you're at. Amen. The word for causes in that verse here means to be moved upon and to be urged by God to come up. The word for causes here in the Hebrew means to be moved upon and to be urged by God to come up. God has urged every born again child of God to urge to get closer to Him. Many of the children of God have experienced this call this divine urge <coughs> to commune with the Lord. The Holy Ghost calls him to the mount of intimacy. Often says, I he says, I, I desire to change you. If you don't see a difference in your life, then you had not come up. Come on. To give you a greater anointing. You said, Brother Pruitt, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a Sunday school teacher. I'm not an evangelist. Amen. I, you could raise your hand. Each and every one of us have got children that are lost. They might be good. They might be good children. But that's not going to get them to heaven. Did you hear me? I got good children too. But if they don't know Jesus, they're not going to make it to heaven. I want to take you 
In other words, God says, when I call you closer, amen, for a greater anointing, I want to take you deeper and further in me. I want to reveal my ways to you as never before. Say, well, our problem is with a standstill sometimes. As church, a lot of churches you go into, they're dead. They need to be resurrected because they have not moved up. They have stood still. You know, water that stands still gets stagnated. Yet not, not all who are called responds. As a result, God touches them. Amen. Those that come up with fire and unction to do something for Him. Not for the preacher, not for the deacons, not for the trustees, not for the Sunday school teachers, not for the evangelists, but for Him. Did you hear me? God is calling us to come up. Most who are called and chosen stop halfway up the mount. Did you hear me? It's sad to say they don't get no further. I believe it's in Exodus 24. Exodus 24, verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab, Nadab and Abiah, and the seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, neither shall the people go up with him. So why did God tell these men to their faces, worship me afar off? Mm -mm -mm. He said, don't come near to me. Only Moses shall come up to me at the top of the mount. The fact is, God knew the sins that were brew, brewing in these men's hearts. And they had to be dealt with. He wanted to touch their lives, but he couldn't do that as long as they were hiding sin. Oh, I could stop there. Woo -hoo -wee. Hidden sin in our hearts that stops us going up to Him. I'm talking about spiritually. Did you hear me? Hidden sin. Amen. Adultery, fornication, homosexuality, jealousy, strife, envy, bitterness. Amen. The glory to God. The list goes on and on. And we want to know why in the world I ain't going no further. Because He knows what's brewing in your heart. Did you hear me? Mm. Lord have mercy. So God allowed them to come only halfway up the mount. Yet even so, he appears to them supernaturally as a cloud of darkness. They saw the God of Israel. I believe it's, I believe it's verse 10, uh, Exodus 24 and verse 10. And, uh, and uh, verse 9 then went up Moses and Aaron Nadab, Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and they saw the God of Israel they were under his feet as were paved work of seraphim stones and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness how in the world they could be in the presence of God and see these things you know what's in your heart. I know what's in mine. God, He searches the depths of our hearts. He knows the realms of our hearts. And amen, Lord, to God. You said, Brother Pruitt, why a message like that? Lord, I thought it was going to be good. You said, the Lord wants us to come up. He does, but some of us, amen, got halfway. 
Come on, church, with love and compassion. We need a move of God. We don't need thousands of programs. We need Jesus, the Holy Ghost baptizer that will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But if he can't trust us in the small things, he surely ain't going to trust you in the bigger things. Did you hear me? These men now stood in the incredible presence of God. They even ate and drank, amen, there at a table in the presence. But they were still afar off from Him. Church, this this age that we know is getting ready to come to a close. Don't know the day, don't know the hour when the Son of Man shall come. Don't play with the devil. Did you hear me? Your thoughts, it don't make no difference. Well, I'm right, I'm right. It don't make no difference. God tells us we're wrong. Did you hear me? Of love and compassion, God wants us to move. Move up closer to Him. Amen. They sat at the table, they ate and they drank, and the sapphire just, uh, just under their feet, the glory of God. Amen. They ate and drank at the table while Moses went in the thickness and the darkness where God was. Amen. Glory to God. Why? It's just like us in the services. The Holy Ghost is hid in our services. God will bless us, lay out in the Spirit. Next day we got a little envy and strife or backbiting, whatever it is. Amen. Go to God. Why? These, these men, Aaron and his sons and 70 elders was there. And they seen the glory of God. You can't be intimate with me. God says you cannot be intimate with me as long as you have hidden sin. I preach like this because I love you. And I don't know about you, but I want to make it to heaven, don't you? And I want to take everybody I can with me. Tell me something, Brother Prude. I fought the devil all week, so have I. Amen. You said, give me something good that I can rejoice over. I am giving you something. God is telling you and me. He wants us to move closer to Him. Amen. Glory to God. When we draw nigh to Him, He'll draw nigh to us. You got a hunger and thirst after righteousness. Then shall we be filled. Did you hear me? We don't get nowhere of God halfway. Did you hear me? Aaron had been told by God, I'm going to, amen, sanctify you as the high priest. I clothe you in purple and gold. And I set you before Israel as an example. Yet in Aaron's heart was tainted by jealousy over Moses. He also feared man more than God. Uh, you say, why you say that? Because he helped them with the golden calf. One more time, Aaron, hidden sin, had been told by God, I'm going to sanctify you as a high priest. I clothe you in purple and gold, and I set you before Israel as an example. Yet Aaron had... His heart was tainted by jealousy over Moses. And he also feared man more than God. God had told Nadab and Abihu he would reveal his holiness to them. Yet these two men was hardened in an addiction to adultery. Laying with women at the gate at the temple. They didn't pose an ounce of fear of God whatsoever. A 
Amen. He said, I am a merciful God. My desire is that when you come into my presence, you allow yourselves to be broken. Did you hear me? It ain't always it's my way or the highway. You can't say that to God. It's his way. Oh, no way. Did you hear me? It's his way. He's not up there saying, let's make a deal. God said, this is the deal. God told the 70 elders he wanted to exalt him before the world. Yet these same men refused to be under any authority. They considered themselves to be as gifted and holy as Moses. This later would manifest itself in a rebellion and uprising. But God was urging them into his presence. He wanted to deal, amen, with their daily pride they had. People don't like authority. Oh, my, my, my. He wants us to come up. Whatever's in my life and yours, He wants you to deal with it so you can come closer to God. God was warning these chosen men, giving them a mercy call. And that's what he's doing to all of us today. Amen. He's given us a mercy call. As I was praying and I was weeping and crying within myself, I said, God, I want to move up. If there's anything hindering me to get into your presence, let the Holy Ghost burn out everything in me. Lead me, guide me, direct me. Amen. Jesus, you said you would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God would give us the utterance. I don't know about you, but God, put me on fire. Put me on fire. Lord, anoint me. I need more anointing. I need a great anointing. I need, glory to God, you to bless me. Because nobody else can do it but you. I could go to John Hagee, Brother Swaggers. Amen, glory to God over them. But they cannot bless me. Did you hear me? There's only one blesser. His name is Jesus. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. Can't nobody bless you but Him. Nobody. And I'm not knocking those men. I love them men. I watch those men. But amen, they can't bless me. They bless me. But they're singing and they're preaching. But I'm talking about a blessing only God can give you and me. Amen. Amen. The Lord so desired to use all these men. He wanted them to be broken. So He could bring them up higher. So he gave them an incredible mercy call to come up. But they let their hidden sin miss out on a blessing. Psalms 25 and verse 5 says, Lead me in, the tr lead me in thy truth and teach me for that art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. As I heard a minister preach here not too long ago, wait for it. Isaiah 40 and verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Ain't God's word good? Ain't God's word truth? You said, Brother Pruitt, it's off quiet. People not liking it. Good. That means it's tearing you up. I hope you don't like it. Then we'll do something about it and step up closer to God. Did you hear me? I'm not mama called. I'm not daddy called. I'm not wife called. I'm God called.
called. I know I'm God called. I've been anointed and touched by him. Amen. Go to God's church with love and compassion. Move closer to God. Hmm. I think it's Isaiah 49 verse 23, the last sentence in that verse. They shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Mm. They shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Passage after passage calls us to wait on God. How many of us have quickly turned back to our old ways? How many of us are pulled back by our flesh to be a dead form religion? Mm. Exodus 24 and verse 12. The Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me unto the mount and be there. Such a God test servant had determined, I'm going to wait on God. I won't settle for anything less than face-to-face communion with Him. It doesn't matter that others do in their walk. I want God to take me places in Him where others refuse to go. Come on. Come on, honey. Get a song ready. Let's step up. God is calling us. To come closer. Amen. Go to God. Amen. Even through your television, through your internet, through everything else, God can speak to your spirit. Get come up. Cut the TV off, the internet, and everything else. Cut your cell phone off. Get closer to God. Of love and compassion this morning. Amen. As we know, as time is now, things are getting ready to change drastically here in a little bit. Now, it could be months, it could be years, but I know in a fact, amen. If you can't see God is so close to return, amen, you are just spiritually blinded. Amen. With love and compassion, God wants us to get closer because you're not going to make it through shallow waters. You're going to make it in deep waters, spiritually. With love and compassion, amen, go to God. Amen. I'm not saying I don't know your life. I'm just giving you what God gave me. If you got any hidden sins, say, God, help me to get rid of this. I have an all against my brother, all against my sister, whatever it may be. Amen. Said, Lord, help me to get it under the blood. Help me to forget and go on. Help me, Lord Jesus. Amen. Somebody might offend it. Amen. So please help me to forgive and to love. You know how people know you are His disciples? Because you have love for one another. Amen. That's how everybody's going to know you belong to God. Because you have love for one another. With love and compassion, go to God today. Amen. Let's all stand, every head bowed, and every eye closed, and no one looking around for a few minutes. I don't know your heart, and I don't know your life, but God does. He said, I want you to come closer. Just like Aaron, his sons, Seventy elders. Oh, they sat at the table, they drank and they ate. A sapphire stone under the feet, the glory of God. They seen the blessings, they seen it. But the heart was tainted. Is anybody here that's lost? You need Jesus. He's here to save your soul. Don't listen to that old devil.
anybody and everybody. 